Hey everyone! Welcome to my channel. My name is Vanessa and you are watching the Exploring Oracle or the Exploracle for short. So if you're new here, what I usually do on this channel is I just show you a deck from my collection and we go through all of the cards, the guidebook, cardstock, and all of those things. I do have timestamps to all of the sections down below in case you're just interested in a particular part. And feel free to just click on a section that you're interested in. So today we will be taking a look at a mass market oracle deck called the Sacred Creator's Oracle. It is a 67 card deck and guidebook for your creator soul. This is this used to be an indie deck published by Chris Ann. She is the same creator of the Oh. What is that? Oh my god, I forgot the name the name of the deck. Hold on. Okay, so Chris Ann is the same creator as the Lightseer Saru. But anyway, so Chris Ann, this was her first deck, I think, before Lightseers. And it used to be indie, but it, now, but it is now mass market. So thank you to Hay House for picking this up. And it says in the inside of the box, you are a sacred creator and you can build the life of your dreams. It has this quite substantial guidebook. The cards and then you have some extra goodies for um, from the sacred creators website and uh, it says here this is a guide for dream chasers and magic makers seeking serendipity magic intuition and expansive potential in everyday life or in business make your big sacred dream a reality with this completely revised and updated hay house edition of the sacred creators oracle the messages you receive will guide you to take inspired action in your purpose-filled life as you map your soul's journey or plan your next creative project. The extra journal prompts for each card are a fun and simple way to rethink the challenges you encounter and to inspire magic so your creator's spirit will thrive. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the guidebook. So in the guidebook, you have a table, table of contents, so a message to sacred creator, Working with the cards, choosing your power cards, uh, a quick guide for the new card reader, and also badass biz and live creator spreads. Then you go into the messages of all of the cards. Uh, you have your creator cards, go deeper, exercises, and about Chris Ann and acknowledgments. So, so this is how you work with the, these cards. I'm sorry if you're hearing some noise. I don't know. My neighbors are, I think, moving their stuff. <laughs> okay, so start by choosing the card you like the most and the one you like the least. So these are your power cards. So it, uh, it talks about what you can do with these cards. Then um, a quick guide for the new card reader. So let's say that you are. this is your first deck. So it tells you how to connect with the deck and all of those things. Then you have... You have some spreads and then the messages of all of the cards. Now for each card, you have the name of the card, the essential meaning, a self-care message, and uh, additional message here plus some journal prompts. So there's a lot that you can get from this guidebook aside from the prompts that uh, you get from the cards themselves. So it's a good guidebook to work with if you choose to. And at the end, it has some information on the creator card. So there are elemental cards in the deck. How to go deeper, some exercises, extras, and freebies. And then about present and acknowledgments. Okay. So here are the cards. They are matte. These are the backs. They are very similar to the Light Sears. Uh, I didn't keep that deck for some reason. I didn't connect with it. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful deck. It's great um, for beginners. It has a great guidebook, but it just didn't connect with with the deck. So uh, this one, this comes in a matte card stock, quite similar, but seems a little bit thinner. It snaps back quite well. It's a little on the thin side, but it, I wouldn't consider it flimsy. And, but it does feel a little bit cardboardy, sim similar to how the other Hay House decks feel like. But again, this is a very usable cardstock, so I don't mind it at all. Okay, so let's just zoom in and take a closer, closer look at all of the cards. All right, so it is borderless. 
each card has a different color palette and the messages are here down below now this is actually the second time this deck has come into my collection uh, I bought this at the start of my tarot and oracle journey like two two, two years ago and I rehomed it without opening it because at that time I, I, I wasn't sure that these types of decks would work for me. Gratitude again. Because they're <laughs> in my mind they're just words on cards, right? And uh, I didn't really resonate with affirmation decks or uh, things of that nature. So I didn't think that I would connect with this deck in particular. Mm -hmm. But as my practice grew and as I started working with more decks, I realized that it's not really uh, the words that are the issue. It's the voice or the tone. And it's hard to explain, but it. I saw this deck in a recent Hay House sale and I decided to give it a chance because there are some keywords here that I, or some phrases here that I absolutely love. Now, of course, I don't love them all, <laughs> but it is a 67 card deck, so I can choose to remove some cards. So these are the creator cards, so I, you can move them. You can add them into the deck or not, uh, but they're elemental cards. Uh, they are not the, the prompts like that, but let me put that to the side. What does your soul say? So there are some prompts like this, like questions. Uh, there are some phrases like, the edge of evolution feels messy, be your artist, soul on fire. And I like that there's actually different designs because it doesn't get boring. What's your honest truth? I, I, I resonate a lot with the prompt styles. <laughs> um, yeah, but I also like some of the, the phrases here really. Move beyond intention to belief. Step ahead is all you need. Cozy up with risk. Light in the unexpected. Bravely market your magic. Manifesting and doing. Ambush fear with your ferocious dream. Now, uh, some of these phrases like this one, eh, it's it's a little meh for me, but I still keep it in the deck. Fall in love with your own story. I like this one. Your past supports your future. Overrate your intuition. Get back to elemental. Inflow with money. What do you really want? So again, these types of prompts, I really like it because it makes you think. And I do like to write. I like to journal about things. So uh, more of write, not really. I don't do like the aesthetic journals, but I type. <laughs> I have a an online journal that has a lot of these prompts and my responses to them. Fearless expression. Make a mission statement for your soul. Success in transformation. Welcome, the Divine Masculine. Feel free to slow down, pause, or speed up uh, because I do go through these flip-throughs quite quickly. Overthinking can spoil the magic. This is one of my favorite cards in the deck, the good kind. So these, again, are creator cards. So I think I did set that aside. <laughs> the the water card, I think, just... Uh, got lost external validation balance find your sacred flow nourish the sacred feminine prosperity sisters or happiness and joy accept and receive stop drop and ground oops you are living poetry shift the way to new potential Integrate your knowing. Fill your cup with sacred giggles. Choose who you are becoming. 
changes. Collaboration of souls. Limitations inspire innovations. The distraction of shiny things. Change maker makes change maker make waves. Befriend the word polarize. You the muse. Follow through. Raw intention and you are magic. Love that. Okay, so I zoomed out. Let's see how this deck shuffles. So as with any other Hay House card deck with this card stock, you know, the the mat, a little bit cardboardy kind, it shuffles well enough. There is it, it has a tendency to develop a bow, so just uh, I just shuffle it the other way. And it takes care of that. It is a usable card stock. So it's not my favorite, but I can work with it. It also overhands quite well. Oops. <laughs> I think we will wait for that one. The distraction of shiny things. Oops. <laughs> uh, but yes, you can overhand this. I'm just being a little bit clumsy. Okay. And then we will read for this card. So it is numbered, uh, so it's very easy to find the corresponding entry in the guidebook. And the essential meanings for this card, taking stock and leveraging your strengths, polishing and buffing your image, the strength of discernment, knowing exactly what is right for you and what is, what is not right for you at this time. And then for the self-care message, illusion, delusion, being distracted by another person, shiny things, Comparing yourself to others, veering from your course, coveting another person's success, imposter syndrome, being continuously tempted to jump to the next hot thing. And then the, uh, the core message, you've got a big purpose, a mission, a whole big beautiful life to create. Stay the course, silly magpie. Don't get distracted by the allure of the many glittery options you see most of which aren't what you truly desire. Sometimes the path towards your desires will sway, but the overall north should remain stable, else you'll find yourself flying in circles. If you've been doing a whole lot of pivoting lately, it's time to look at the underlying reason why. Do you have a flight plan? Or are you gliding around aimlessly unsure of where to go next? Use your longings as a barometer of what's possible for your life avoiding the temptation to emulate other people's shiny lives. While it's perfectly fantastic and strategic to do a little competitive analysis, do it from a place of confident curiosity and not from a place of unhealthy comparison. Focus on finding your own powerful glow instead, for nothing in the world is more magical. And then you have some prompts. How do you avoid the temptation of shining meaningless things? What's your weakness and how can you avoid it? And uh, it um, and it also asks your particular brand of shiny. What makes you unique? What's your wild? What's your quirky? What's your divine light? How do you communicate when you are in your own zone? And how can you learn to fly in the light always? So I like, I really like the guidebook. I uh, sometimes the words, you know, they're just a a jumping off point. But the guidebook offers a whole lot more than what you can initially see from, uh, from the cards themselves. And uh, I, that's why I love working with guidebooks. And I know that a lot of people don't um, work with guidebooks, which is a shame, you know, because the creators, Chris Ann spent a lot of time here, I'm sure. And you can get a lot more from, from working with it. If you're called, you know, if if you're called to do so, and I'm, I'm not here to tell you to just read the guidebook and, and force you to do that. Definitely not. If you want to keep working just with the cards and working off your intuition, you do you. But I'm just saying that, at least for me personally, there is a lot of value that I get from working with the the, the guidebook for this deck. It makes it a lot more special. And 
it's this deck has been around for a while i'm sure you've seen a lot of flip throughs of uh, this deck already but yes i just wanted to share it because again this is a deck that i gave up but now it's back and i'm glad that it's here and i'm working with it now uh, again some of the keywords are just okay but the others really really resonate with me i really like um this grounding card as well and if you're called to it check out the house when they go on sale because i got this for like ten dollars all right so that has been the flip through of the sacred creators oracle by chris ann if you find this video helpful don't forget to click on the like button and please consider subscribing to my channel see you again next time bye